Good morning and thank you for joining me for this time of morning prayer on Thursday. When I was at Bible College we were told the ancient art of randomly opening the Bible and pointing to a verse in the hope that God would lead your finger to the right place. Of course sometimes it worked and the seeker would be delighted thinking that they had heard from the Lord. Of course, if it didn't work and you ended up getting an obscure or even unpleasant verse, you could simply repeat the act and do it again and again until you got what you wanted. In case we thought that this was an acceptable way to listen to God, we were then told of an individual who in tears approached their tutor after having performed this ancient rite. For they had randomly opened the Bible, hoping for inspiration and pointing they got the verse and Judas hanged himself. Traumatised, they repeated the act only to get further instruction, go and do likewise. I don't think that they ever did it again. Today marks the feast of Saint Matthias for the church, who was chosen as an apostle to replace Judas Iscariot. For the ancient Jews and early disciples, casting lots was a good way to show God's will. Getting it right was important to them as it is important to us today. And using lots was a way for them to avoid feelings and prejudices from influencing key decisions and a way for an outcome to be put into God's hands. I think today though making an important decision by either flipping a coin or by casting lots would be considered both unacceptable and even reckless and so I wouldn't advise you doing it. These days we invite applications and determine the suitability of a person on the basis of their skills and their experience. But I wonder how important is it for us to know God's will in the decisions that we make day by day? Do we make those decisions on our own without consulting him, just hoping that he will approve? Jesus reminds us that we did not choose him, but he chose us and chose us to bear fruit that will remain. In the book of Galatians we read, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Paul says against these, there is no law. Sometimes we really do need the specific guidance of the Holy Spirit in a decision that we've got to make. And while we don't cast lots anymore, I hope, we may indeed pray, fast, and seek the wisdom of others in the body of Christ so that together we can get a general consensus as to the right way forward. In many things, of course, we don't need that same intensity of guidance. In those decisions, I think we just simply live by and act in accordance with the rule of love, for this is God's way for us all. And so my friends, as we think on and reflect on the readings today, I pray that you may know God's leading in all that you do, and that the law of love may guide you in all things. And remember, don't use that ancient art of Bible flicking to make your decisions, as you might not get the advice that you would like. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed be you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the works of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. 
as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Today's psalm is Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places, and I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart will instruct me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, and I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life, for in your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the first book of Samuel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 27. A man of God came to Eli, and he said to him, Thus the Lord has said, I revealed myself to the family of your ancestor in Egypt when they were slaves to the house of Pharaoh. I chose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to go up to my altar, to offer incense, to wear an ephod before me, and I gave to the family of your ancestor all my offerings by fire from the people of Israel. Why then do you look with greedy eye at my sacrifices and my offerings that I commanded, and honour your sons more than me by fattening yourselves on the choicest parts of every offering of my people Israel? Therefore the Lord God of Israel declares, I promised that your family and the family of your ancestor should go in and out before me for ever. But now the Lord declares, Far be it from me, for those who honour me I will honour, and those who despise me shall be treated with contempt. See, a time is coming when I will cut off your strength and the strength of your ancestors' family, so that no one in your family will live to old age. Then in distress you will look with greedy eye on all the prosperity that shall be bestowed upon Israel, and no one in your family shall ever live to old age. The only one of you whom I shall not cut off from my altar shall be spared to weep out his eyes and grieve his heart. All the members of your household shall die by the sword. The fate of the two sons you have, Hophni and Phinehas, shall be assigned to you, for both of them shall die on the same day. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest, who shall do according to what he has in his heart and in my mind. I will build him a sure house, and he shall go out and in before my anointed one for ever. Today's canticle is a song of wisdom. A God of our ancestors and Lord of mercy, you have made all things by your word. By your wisdom you have formed us to have dominion over the creatures you have made, to rule the world in holiness and righteousness, and to pronounce judgment in uprightness of soul. Give us the wisdom that sits by your throne. Do not reject us from among your servants, for we are your servants with little understanding of judgment and laws. Even one who is perfect among us will be regarded as nothing without the wisdom that comes from you. With you is wisdom. She knows your works and was present when you made the world. She understands what is pleasing in your sight and what is right according to your commandments. Send her forth from your holy heaven. From the throne of your glory send her, 
that she may labour at our side and that we may learn what is pleasing to you. For she knows and understands all things and she will guide us wisely in our actions and guard us with her glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning at verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments, and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. And so we say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift our hearts to you today, asking for your presence amongst us. Lord, in this secular world, it is sometimes difficult to differentiate between worldly and Christian values, to know the right path in which we should go and to understand your will for our lives. Lord God, in you we live and move and have our being. Help us never to forget that you are beside us all through the day and that you have told us that if we need wisdom, to ask for it knowing that you will give it to us. So Lord, please grant that throughout today, every word we speak may be fit for you to hear, that every deed we do may be fit for you to see, and that every thought of our mind and emotion of our heart may be fit to bear your scrutiny. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as your church, we await and look forward to the day when we can be back in our buildings to worship you together. But Lord, help us not to forget the value of all that we have learned by being church outside. Lord, help us to make the right decisions for mission and ministry that are based on people and not on buildings. Always, Lord, relying on the wisdom of your spirit to direct us. 
as the Church of England prepares to hold their annual parochial church meetings later this year, Lord, inspire and direct us as to who should stand as officers in your church. Give grace, wisdom and revelation to all who lead us. To our Archbishop Justin Welby, our bishops here in Southwark, Christopher and Jonathan, and the clergy in our local churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our country, for our Prime Minister Boris and for his cabinet, for our Queen and our local councils. Guide them in their decision making and influence what they do with your law of love. For those who live outside of this country, grant your wisdom to all who rule over others and grace where there is disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray uh, for those we know to be unwell and we name them in our hearts. We pray especially today, Lord, for Kim Brown, for Ben Clark, for Fiona Delia. We pray, Lord, for those who are in the process of waiting for an operation or for treatment. We pray for those who have carers and nurses at home and who have the difficult decision to make regarding their future and their well-being. We pray for those who have difficult decisions to make regarding their relationships, especially where children are involved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect for today. Almighty God, who in the place of the traitor Judas chose your faithful servant Matthias to be of the number of the twelve, preserve your church from false apostles and by the ministry of faithful pastors and teachers keep us steadfast in your truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm going to close with another reading from Jesus Calling. Relax and let me lead you through this day. I have everything under control, my control. You tend to peer anxiously into the day that is before you, trying to figure out what to do and when. Meanwhile, the phone or the doorbell rings and you have to reshuffle your plans. All that planning ties you up in knots and distracts you from me. Attentiveness to me is not only for your quiet time, but for all of your time. And so as you looked to me, I show you what to do now and next. Vast quantities of time and energy are wasted in obsessive planning. When you let me direct your steps, you are set free to enjoy me and to find what I have prepared for you this day. My friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do enjoy your day.